Michelle Krosmer and Dr. Hashmi here with Plant-Based Kidney Health. And today we're giving you some tips on lowering creatinine. We get asked this all the time. Dr. Hashmi, can you first start with explaining what is creatinine, what can cause it to be higher or lower, and then we'll get into some tips for lowering it. Okay, so let's try to see if we can give a very, very simple non-medical definition so everybody can try to remember this. So if you think about creatinine, it's nothing more than a very simple waste product. And what happens is the waste product comes from the digestion of protein in your food. So if you're eating things like meat, it will end up being a breakdown waste product that's coming from that. It also comes from the breakdown of muscle tissue. So the way that it ends up being removed through your blood as a waste product is through your kidneys. Now, what happens is, is if your kidneys are working well, there'll be a steady state and we can measure what's left over in your blood as a sign of good kidney function. If creatinine starts to build up in your blood, that's a sign that your kidneys are not working well. So if you have normal kidney function for men, we're expecting to see is anywhere between 0.6 to 1.2 milligrams per deciliter of creatinine. Women, because they generally have a little bit less muscle than men, will be about 0.5 to about 1.1 milligrams per deciliter of creatinine. That's a very simple definition of creatinine. All right, perfect. So we know then for people with kidney disease, obviously a sign then of damage is that the creatinine levels are um, higher. So people are always asking us, well, how do I lower my creatinine? So from a uh, physician, medication, even lifestyle standpoint, um, what can someone do to lower their creatinine? Okay, so let's let's take all the, um, the <clears throat> fancy hype from the internet away from this because there's a lot of people who say things that are absolutely wrong and they're trying to sell you something or just they're trying to take your money. So let's get away from that. The three biggest things are is you got to have a healthy weight. So remember, if your weight is extra, a few things are going to happen. It's first, by having extra weight, you're going to have more muscle. So you're making more creatinine. So if you lose weight... By definition, you're going to have less muscles, you're making less creatinine. That doesn't ma mean that your kidneys got better. It just means that you're making less creatinine. That's number one. But because you have less weight, you also have less pressure on the kidneys. So you could actually heal your kidney. So there's actually a lot of truth to losing weight and getting smaller because you take the pressure off the kidneys. Number two is blood pressure. If you weigh less, you're going to cause less pressure onto the kidneys. That in itself is going to cause less scarring inside the kidneys. That will cause the kidneys to be able to heal themselves. So that's very important. So blood pressure is number two. And the third one is sugars. The less you have sugars in your system that are high, the less you're going to damage your kidneys. So the three biggest things is weight sugars, and blood pressure. Those are key no matter what anybody says. Now, the rest of it are much smaller on that list, and there are things you really ought to consider. If you're somebody who's a young athlete or bodybuilder, don't take creatine supplements if you're about to take a blood test. It's going to make it look like you have kidney disease because creatine will convert to creatinine. Now, what's beautiful about creatine is there's a lot of data that creatine can be very beneficial for your brain health. So it's not just bodybuilders who use creatine. A lot of people who have early Alzheimer's, early memory issues going on, migraines, they take creatine. So creatine has secondary benefits. But if you're going to do a blood test looking at your kidney function, definitely tell your provider, I've been taking creatine and stop your creatine at least a couple days before. Number two, if you're taking a bunch of protein, reduce your protein intake before you go and do a blood test. Number three, if you actually want to improve your overall condition, you actually want to increase your fiber intake. Why? Because fiber diets, high fiber diets, the data shows that they will actually reduce the toxins from the bacteria inside your colon, inside your gut, and they will lower your blood creatinine levels. So it's fascinating that just by eating a whole food plant-based diet, you're going to lower your serum creatinine levels. And this is why when we talk about the ideal kidney diet, it is a low protein, high fiber diet, which consists of a whole food plant-based diet. That's 
predominantly a whole food plant-based diet. It, you don't have to be a purist or anything like that. That's not what we're about, but we recommend going in that direction. And that's why it's so important. Now, there are certain medications that can interfere with the release of creatinine through your kidneys into the urine. So it can make it look like your creatinine levels are higher than they should be. This is more for doctors because we hardly ever see this, but it's medicines like ranitidine, cymetidine, trimethoprim. So if you're on any one of those, it will make it look like your blood creatinine levels are higher than they should. The second you stop those medications, your creatinine levels will go down. The other thing there is, is there are certain medications that will actually affect your kidneys and they can damage your kidneys. Those are NSAIDs, ibuprofen, Motrin, Excedrin, Aleve. All those names are important. And then the basics. You can't have a conversation and not talk about salt. Salt causes so much damage. Smoking causes so much damage. Alcohol causes so much damage. All three of those things are so important. And if you stop those things, you will lower your creatinine levels. On the flip side, you have to look at coffee as a friend. There's a sweet spot. Too much coffee is bad for you. And it turns out that the sweet spot is around two to three cups per day, caffeinated or decaf. I have no stock in coffee, but just so you realize, two to three cups of coffee or tea can actually be beneficial to overall kidney health. And that's it. Those are the things from a lifestyle perspective, from a medication perspective, that can actually make a difference. So then, Michelle, shifting that away, what about from a dietary perspective, you know, as people kind of go about their things and foods and so forth, are there stuff that they can look at in terms of creatinine? Yeah, well, you pretty much named them, but I'll summarize. I'd say the top four things um, for lowering creatinine from a dietary standpoint is limiting or reducing animal protein, especially red meat, um, low sodium diet. So that means less than 2000 milligrams a day. Um, some, you know, like American heart association recommends more around 1500 milligrams, especially if someone has high blood pressure, um, you mentioned fiber. So a high fiber diet, um, coming from whole plant foods is very, very important. We do have other episodes on fiber, but it's really important. You know, the goal is at least 25 grams of fiber a day for women, at least 30 grams of fiber a day for men, but really it should be much higher than this, but you have to increase it slowly. If all of a sudden you're like, all right, Michelle and Dr. Hashmi said we need more fiber to lower our creatinine. And you normally have 15 grams of fiber a day. You can't just bump it up like that. Um, you want to increase it slowly, um, add, you know, two tablespoons of beans to a dish, try some chia seed or ground flax seed, have more servings of fruits and vegetables, um, but do it slowly and increase as you go. And then the number four thing is, I would say is just make sure you're well hydrated. It doesn't need to be this like crazy over hydration, but you wanna make sure that you are not dehydrated um, if you have kidney disease. And I would say those are the um, four things dietary wise, biggest things that you can do to help with your creatinine levels. Um, and I would just say, I think then overall summarizing this for tips for lowering creatinine, some of the biggest things are, um, and they're kind of broad categories, but you want to be at a healthy body weight for you. You need to make sure that you are controlling blood pressure and blood sugar, because those are the biggest drivers of damage to your kidneys, which then result in higher creatinine levels. And then all of these diet and lifestyle things, um, are, you know, not smoking, not excessively drinking alcohol, making sure you're getting, um, you know, having a more whole food plant-based diet, whether it's hundred percent or 60%, it's helping you and it's beneficial for you. And that's what really matters for lowering your creatinine. Anything else, Dr. Hashmi? I love it. I love it. No, that's it. Thank you guys. All right. Thanks guys.